Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be putting carburetors back together that came off a 2003 Honda Shadow 1100. Here's the carburetor kit I purchased with the parts for both carburetors, so let's get started. I'm going to begin with, before we start putting this together, even though they've been cleaning the parts cleaner and all, spraying some carburetor cleaner in the passages and inside the carburetor just in case something did get in over the time it's been a day or so since i cleaned them so i'm just making double sure can't over clean and now i'm going to put the after i dry it here take and grab the carburetor cleaner and put the little plastic nozzle in the end which half the time i lose these but i didn't and now i am going to spray down into the passages where the jets sit and such and make sure they're cleaned out good yeah this is always a good idea because you can also check when you do this if everything is running through all the passages because of the liquid instead of trying with just blowing with the air filling for the air out the other side because they are such fine passages but i'm convinced everything's looking good here and i'm spray some in where the fuel itself would enter the carburetor and again just every place there's an opening is like you say for air or fuel just give it a shot of the cleaner and furthermore to aid in your assembly of your own carburetor i'm trying to show you all the openings both air and fuel that i have found on this carburetor i don't think i've missed any i've looked over pretty carefully and again if you follow the video you'll know where everyone's located and now I'm pretty much convinced it's good. Going to grab the air nozzle again and dry it. And then we can get serious here and we'll start putting parts back in it. And here you can see while I'm using the nozzle to dry it, I'm blowing in all the passages, trying to control the flow of the air. I could actually go turn the regulator on the compressor down real low, but that would be actually easy. I'm just barely pushing, I mean pulling in on the trigger on the air nozzle. <laughs> Okay, that is taken care of on the dry. Now it's time to open up our little bag of parts for the carburetors and space the pieces out what did come with them. We have various, looks like some jets and some washers, the float bowl gasket I see, and there in that little plastic bag is the float needle seat and the needle, which is a must-have. I mentioned that in an earlier video, that the float needle and seat is definitely the biggest problem when it comes to a carburetor. It's usually, if you have carburetor issues, that is the culprit and the main issue of it. Okay, we have the parts spaced out here. I'm going to take and grab the first one. I think I'm looking at everything here. I'm going to take the main needle, the seat there, there's the new one, and there is the old one. Compare them side by side for length and such. They look the same. The threads look the same. Again, everything you can see with the naked eye without getting a magnifying glass or anything out. And we're going to take and thread that into the proper location in the carburetor. And you can see from the video where it does sit and tighten that in with our 7 millimeter socket with the socket extension. Okay, now we're going to take here and grab the slow jet and put that in next. And that you just need the straight screwdriver and turn that back into, you can see where we're on uh, both jets. They're both threaded different. No, you couldn't mix them up even if you wanted to unless you'd like totally force it and cross thread items. And tighten it snugly, but don't go nuts with it. Again, it's just a little brass part. And we're going to grab the main jet and turn it into the main jet holder. And that is also, again, I'm just going to turn it in with my thumb and index finger. And then we're going to just take and again, snug it up with the screwdriver. Not ridiculously tight, just snug. And I'm going to say that is good. And then we're going to go grab the needle seat and the needle. Take it out of its little separate bag. They gave the needle seat and the needle, mainly the needle, is somewhat, I guess, touchy item. They didn't want it to get damaged around. Okay, we're going to put the needle seat in first. 
and it comes with the little filter for on the end of it. I'm trying to push that filter on it, uh, and there it is. And now all we have to do is just merely turn it into the location where it sits in the carburetor, and we'll take it and grab our 10 millimeter socket and socket driver, and we're going to tighten that up. And I'm going to say that will do the job. Take note, I put that needle seat in, and there was actually a worser to shoot have went on, which I didn't show, and I went caught myself later, but note on that. Okay, now we are going to put the needle, just hook it here on the float, right on that little tab, and we're just going to take carefully and set that back into the carburetor with the needle going into the needle seat. Like I say, you don't want to go anything push or anything on this really hard because it's fragile and then we're going to take the float pin which is right there that's the the original none in the kit and again unless you lose it you shouldn't need it and take here and hold this up in place here while i put the pin in and the pin again should just merely slide in with no real effort whatsoever and there it is furthermore once the float bolt covers on the pin cannot fall out that's why it doesn't have to be any tight fit or any clips or nothing on it and there i'm checking the float level I, it's not actually a float gauge but it's supposed to be nine millimeters and in my opinion that looks like nine millimeters now we'll check the other side of the float since i don't have the actual float gauge but this will work fine if you take and you hold it again firmly at a like a right angle with the carburetor where the float bolt sits and now going to take and lubricate uh, some parts here, O-rings and that before I put them in. I'm going to dump some Marvel Mystery Oil into the lid of the container to have it ready. And the first thing we are going to take and lubricate, I'm ready to put it back on, is the rubber gasket for the float bowl cover itself. And there's the rubber gasket. And just take and dip my finger into Marvel Mystery Oil and this is going to get a nice coat on it so the gasket's nice and lubricated and it'll hold in place temporarily while we turn the float ball upside down and put it back on the carburetor. But you could also, and I've done it in the past, but I don't have any right now. You can also use a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly, whatever you want to call it for this same purpose. But again, have none. And now... I'm going to take and put it in the groove in the float bowl cover. Again, that's simple enough. And it only goes one way. It's sort of like an L shape. You cannot mess it up as far as the direction of putting it on. And I'm just going to take and push it in good and firm. Make sure it is sitting the whole way in the groove itself. And I'm going to take and put a little bit more of the lubricant on it. Besides helping to hold it in place while we temporarily turn the float bowl upside down, this also will help lubricate the gasket that perhaps it will last longer or not dry out or anything. Of course, even the ones on this carburetor, I was surprised I made a comment in an earlier video, were not leaking. But, okay, now it's back on. Now we'll just grab our screws and our Phillips head screws and put them in here to begin with, finger tight, in a diagonal pattern. And also take note, the screws for the float bolt cover are a little bit longer than the ones for that diaphragm chamber. There's four of both of them, but that's sort of a little bit of a note there in case you get confused which ones go which place. The ones for the, again, this float bolt cover are probably about an eighth of an inch longer than the ones for the vacuum diaphragm that chamber cover. And I do like starting, especially working with an aluminum carburetor and these small parts. I like starting everything in with just the thumb and index finger to make sure you were not cross-threading it. Because it would not take much to cross-thread these fine parts. And now, we're going to finish tightening them with a number two screwdriver. Again, diagonal pattern. So, and I'm going to tighten them one round here, sort of snug them up past a little bit past where the finger tight was. And then I'm going to go back around and give them about another approximately half a turn each one that they are for sure snugged up good and everything will be sealing as it should and that takes care of that. Alrighty, next thing on the carburetor, I'm going to take and install the air cutoff diaphragm. 
which that also there's no new one in the kit or anything i'm going to lubricate the used one just check your old one if it's cracked or tore or anything it'll need replaced but this one is in fine shape and i'm going to also lubricate it with the good with the marvel mystery oil and i could like i say so that rubber does stay nice and flexible for hopefully another i guess the 2003 model bike another 20 years well that's asking for a lot but anyhow there that's in and now after that slowed in there's a spring that goes in and then uh air cut off valve cover that goes in next and there it is and just taking that spring's not hard to push down it's a real light spring we'll push it and hold it in place until we get our screws when i put this first screw in first because the other screw is a combination besides holding the air cutoff valve cover it also is a retainer for the where the vacuum hose the elbow hooks on the side and then we're going to have to take and put that back in first and there's an o-ring on that we're going to slide that off and look in the o-ring assortment here once we get this off and find one that matches the closest in the new o-rings and i'm going to say one of these will do it although none of them's really overly exciting me it's not really out of the selection and there's a result. I don't like any of them. I'm just going to reuse what was on it. It's not tour. It's not recommended if you read the Honda shop manual. But I'm not pleased with any of those. And this was the carburetor kit I bought off the internet. It was a cheaper price. Maybe it wasn't such a good deal after all. I know I had heard somebody claim you should buy a Honda kit. And maybe that is the answer this was just an off-brand again off the internet off of a website okay now we're going to install the retainer that holds that vacuum that elbow and tighten that in combination besides it installs the elbow for the vacuum it finishes the installation of the air cutoff valve cover and i'm going to give it again about another quarter to half turn after the past the initial tightening and there is our vacuum uh, uh the diaphragm the piston and that definitely lubricate well one thing that's great with marvel mystery oil besides it's good to lubricate these seals in that it also once it's all back together the carburetor it's actually does do good at cleaning debris in that from a carburetor if there would be some sort of a speck of dirt or something accidentally missing although it seems fairly impossible if you watch the disassembly and cleaning video of this car these carburetors but just in case but it could counteract any again missed foreign debris in the unit there the carburetor okay i'm going to again lubricate here a little bit more around the top of this and I say that is just great. And this should slide in effortlessly right back into the carburetor. And that needle at the end makes sure it lines up with the little hole in the carburetor itself. Don't force anything. Wouldn't take anything to bend the parts, but there it's in. And I'm showing you upside down. And if it's in right, it moves again nice and free. It'll basically slide right in and out. Now we get the grab here in one second once we get this and this only goes on one way there's like one little tab on it there where it sits and now we're going to put the big long spring in and the cover but before i put the cover on i do want to point out what i'm talking about with lining the gasket up there's a little dimple on the cover and there you can see i'm pointing to it on the diaphragm where it sits in it like loops a little round the edge just a little bit but that's what i was saying it only goes one way and then push down on our spring and then this little adjustment there again want to make sure the gasket's not pinched or anything and it went down nice and flush with no problem now we'll put our screws in and get it so we don't have to keep holding it i am going to tighten one up here right away so don't have to keep as much tension against it and one thing when you're working with these carburetors and these small pieces this is a good idea to like myself i'm using just a fold-up car table but just a nice area to work without other clutter that's why i'm not using my actual workbench in the garage i set this up temporarily because my actual workbench has so much junk on it you'd have screws laying and you weren't 
not be sure if they were screws for this or screws for something else. I'll have to clean it sometime. But again, the carburetor's late and the folding car table makes a good temporary work location. All right, and we're going to put the last screw in that holds the diaphragm piston cover in place. And then we'll take care of that part of it. It's going to go to pretty good on this first carburetor, but we still have to assemble the other carburetor and then put them both back together as we progress here on it. I'm just giving the screws like before, about another quarter to a half turn. Alrighty, now that that's done, we're going to take and put the linkage in the carburetor next. I have it here, and there's the original, like a, I won't say it's really a no ring, it was like a cloth type of fiber rink that we're not going to reuse and here's the washer that actually went on the end of it now the washer I'm going to slide back on I just laid it on that to keep the parts organized and here I'm going to go in the overing collection and sort of I'm going to say that was pretty good I'm going to just take and put a little bit on it and then actually I think it's just as small as that overing just dip it in the lubricant then we'll slide it down on the shaft on the linkage until it's at the bottom again work it nice and slow don't want to tear it or anything and such there and now we're going to take and put some of the lubricant the marble mystery oil on the shaft itself for the linkage and coat it lightly so it'll slide in the carburetor easy and there you can see i'll give the carburetor here in a second a little bit of a tilt towards you you can see the linkage sliding in but now before we go any farther there's this nylon washer that goes on and then the linkage like hooks you got to give it a turn down towards the bottom of the carburetor is how it goes properly and then back on and that's again where the father that needs to go for the moment till we assemble the carburetors back together and you can see that's that will work that is the linkage how it was meant to hinge Okay, now we're going to take and install the butterfly back into the linkage and the slot that's made into it, it'll go in. It can, sometimes it folds right in and sometimes it can be a problem, but it's about lined up and the holes in the butterfly, you want to line up with the holes in the linkage and then the real short screws, we'll put one of those back in. These are again the shortest of all the screws but this carburetor. And there's one going in. Make sure don't cross thread it. That wouldn't be good. When you install the butterfly, you'll notice it's sort of, there's not a lot of, like, it's sort of a machine fit. You either have it in the right spot or you don't. So it opens and closes properly. There's not really too much of a deal you're going to get it out of place or it's just not going to go. And lo and behold, there I have to hold the throttle. I was wanting to open while I'm tightening the last screw. Yeah, well, not a big problem. be easier if I had to end back on at the linkies, but it worked and we have it about tightened up. Now I mentioned this in the disassembly video. Under most circumstances, you probably don't have to tear your carburetor apart as far as they didn't split them, but these were extremely dirty. And also, it made a good video if somebody needs to. Well, here's all sorts of pictures and that to show you how to do it. And, uh detailed instructions. Before we go further, I just want to show you, there's the linkage, it's operating freely, nothing's binding. And now we're going to take and install, there's an O-ring that goes on the end of that throttle linkage on the end where it's threaded for the linkage, like on the outside. But this is being sort of a pain putting it in. This is the closest O-ring I could find to fit. I want to just use the screwdriver blunt edge here on the Phillips push it down into place until it's seated the whole way into position I meant this definitely one of them deals is wanting to try my patience but I'm going to say that is good and now we're going to take and put this washer that goes on before a spring and like the linkage hook up and if you see it's like slotted it'll only go on one or two ways one way or the other, it's going to be on right. You can't mess it up. And now here we're going to put the spring on. And if you look at like hooks under a tab on the carburetor body, and then here is the top part of this linkage. And that also hooks in the other. There's like a hook on the end of the spring. And then after you have that, you take and like give it a 
before you push it down on like a turn around till it gets tension on the spring before you slide it down into place. And then a little bit there, giving a little bit of a hassle, but there it is. I'm going to grab our lock washer and nut and put them on so it don't fall out of place. She didn't go too bad. It went actually easier than I thought with keeping the spring hooked and putting the tension against it. Now we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket and tighten the nut on the end of it. Okay, and that is going to say is tight enough, and that concludes that much of the carburetor reassembly. And just show you again, there's the throttle linkage, the butterfly opening and closing, nice and free, nothing's sticking. Now it's time to start assembling the other carburetor. We're going to start the same way. I'm going to spray some carburetor cleaner and use the air and blow all the passages out. more this is the carburetor should have the same and it does the same pretty much passage locations as the first one at the early part of the video you watched me claim but again this sort of going to be a rerun here on this carburetor reassembly is the first one until we actually start into the assembling them back together to make one complete you know the dual carb setup I wanted to say that is good enough. Now it's time to go get into our carburetor kit and dump the pieces out and organize them like we did on the first carburetor we reassembled. I'm going to start there by installing the slow jet, matching it up with the old one, and just take and turn it. And as I made the comment earlier, the one won't fit in the other one's place. The size of the this is are different, so you're not going to mess it up. And again, this is the one that just really merely requires a straight screwdriver to put it in itself. And next, we're going <clears> to <throat> tighten this thread or so here. Just make snug it up here nice. And then we are going to go grab the base or the seat for the main jet. And again, it's the same. Again, this should be identical parts as the first carburetor because it was a twin pack there, the kit there, but they come in a separate plastic bag and a small box to perch for each carburetor. And this is the one you need the 7 millimeter socket to snug up. Okay, now that the seat's in for the main jet, we're going to, but of course, install the main jet. And that just, again, requires the... And then I'm going to turn it in finger tight and then grab the straight screwdriver and tighten it up. And furthermore, I mentioned earlier with the last carburetor, but I did decide to use these new jets, that this carburetor had larger jets in it than uh, what would have been factory, but somebody pushed straight exhaust on it too. So that's probably why the larger jets, but I decided... At least for the moment, can always change it down the road to use the just that came with the carburetor kit. And now we're preparing our the needle seat. And this time I am showing. I did put it in the iron, but I didn't show it. But I put the filter plus that washer on the needle seat. Yeah, don't forget the washer. Again, I didn't show it in the iron. And I actually forgot, but I coughed myself and put it on. And but I say take note of that. Okay, now that it's in, and this is the 10 millimeter socket to tighten it up. Again, you don't really, as far as the rebuilding of the carburetor, really need a whole lot of tools. A 7 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, a straight screwdriver, and one of those driver handles is handy. And now we are reinstalling the float along with the float needle. And just 
tilt the float to it and sit it right down in the needle seat. Then we're going to put our pin in, which again, this should just slide in effortlessly, which it did. Because once again, the carburetor, the float bolt chamber is on, it'll hold it in place. Alrighty, now we're going to check the float needle height, like we, I mean the float height, like we did on the outer carburetor, and it's around 13 millimeter, which is definitely off. When the book calls for nine, I'm just pushing up and down to be sure it was resting against the needle, the float, and it does. And the other side again with the plastic uh, float should be the same, and it is. So now we're going to take and adjust this. This is fairly simple, but just a matter of only a little bit is all it takes. I'm going to take this hook and bend up on the little tab that's built into the float itself. Uh, just just a little. I can say a little slight bend makes all the difference in the world on this. And one more time, it keeps wanting to slip. I'm going to say that's probably just guessing. See what our reading is now. Now what I'm looking at, I'll check the other side here, it looks like maybe just a little bit over 9, but it's such of a trivial amount, I'm going to just let it at that. And we're going to now put the flip bowl cover back on after we lubricate the flip bowl gasket with some of the Marvel Mystery Oil that I'm using for lubricating the gaskets. And again, as usual, I make this comment in all the videos, if you have a question, I don't check every day, but put in the comments below. I'll get back to you. Usually, a week would be the worst case scenario if you have something you it's questioning that you can't figure out from the video and the film. Of course, I try to use good on this good quality video and such and detailed that again, hopefully the if it, even my explanation confuses you, that the pictures are again the old infamous quote worth a thousand words and now we are setting the flip bolt cover back on and just merely need to reinstall the four screws yeah well at least one thing on motorcycle carburetors other than coming up here when we put them back together the actual rebuilding the carburetors even a four-cylinder bike which i had a bunch of four-cylinder bikes a couple years ago when i first started riding old cb 750 and a 550 old hondas that when you tear four apart the actual carburetors yourself are all the same just again there's four of them at least in this case there's only two of them since it's a twin but there we have the screws tightening and then we can go proceed on here they only have about one more step on reassembling or two on reassembling the carburetor and then we'll get into the putting the two of them back together into one. Oh, and one other item, which I'm sure everybody watching this realizes, but just to note, when you buy a carburetor rebuild kit, it's for, again, different years and such, and similar carburetors, but condensed answer, you won't necessarily use all the O-rings and such that's in the kit. Again, I had a few leftover pieces, but that's not anything to get excited about. Okay, now it's time to put the vacuum diaphragm back in. And particularly, again, coat this up good with the lubricant so it slides easy. Yeah, there's no doubt that it slides up and down with that big long spring that goes in next before we put the cover on. So again, want it to work nice. And again, make sure these aren't, like I mentioned on the first carburetor, there's no cracks or nothing in it, which I don't see any on this carburetor. On that, I, you can buy these diaphragms. I had seen them. They're basically about twice what I paid for the carburetor kit on the internet. But if you need it, you need it. You wouldn't have any choice in the matter. Anyhow, there it slid back down in the carburetor effortlessly. Yeah, I'm sure, again, and it did slide in easy. You don't want to force this or anything. And don't forget, again, the big spring. That's something when it's all together, if you still have the spring after you put it all together, you know you forgot it. And then we're putting our cover back on. And again, like I showed on the first carburetor, it only goes on one way. You want to line that little tab up. And just a little bit there. And that seems like it pushed into place so just about. Yeah, well, maybe. There we go. Now we'll get the screw started in it. And remember, these are shorter than the screws for the float bowl. Your longest four screws are for the float bowl, then the, these four are again just a little bit shorter than the ones for the float bowl. 
And again, just as before, keep a little tension against it till the screws are tightened because of that spring. Otherwise, it would just pop right off like a the jack in the box sort of a trick on you. And, that, and then you have to go pick it up and then start over again on realigning it. And that's one thing I come to the conclusion on this project. I found two of them. One decent Phillips and the decent straight screwdriver, but I should update my screwdriver collection. And that's something I have all sorts of tools, do a lot of work on cars mostly, but poor screwdrivers, you don't use them too much on cars except for what you're not supposed to use them for when you do actually need screwdrivers. Well, good luck finding anything, but okay, there's the last one going in and get it snugged up. It's another turn or so, and I'm going to say that is good enough. And there you can see the vacuum diaphragm. I'm pushing there with my index finger. It's moving nice and freely within the carburetor. And now it's time for the air cutoff valve diaphragm. Lubricate that up with the lubricant. And this is sort of the same deal as the large diaphragm. If it would be cracked or tore, you'll have to replace it with another one, but this one's good. And set that right down in, and then put our small spring. And then we're going to grab the cover and put that back on. And again, that also only goes one way. You can see where it lines up and how it's shaped. The only thing you have to remember when you're doing the uh, cover, the air cutoff valve cover, is the one screw uh holds also the retainer for the elbow for the vacuum elbow is what i meant to say but i'm putting the one in first to just strictly hold the cover and then we'll tighten it in and then i'll we'll go end up grabbing the retainer here shortly and putting that on with the other screw that holds the combination screw the vacuum elbow retainer plus this air cutoff valve cover and there is the elbow lubricating it up with the the marvel mistral oil, and there's our retainer and again that if you see there's like a slot cut in it where there's like a notch molded on the the cover for the air cutoff valve and it just lines up with that and then we'll tighten that in and again that's sort of a multi-purpose screw okay now i'm just going to take and Grab the screwdriver and just tighten them a little bit more, and then we can move on to one more step on the assembly of this carburetor, and that is the throttle butterfly and the linkage. And then we can get serious and put them both together. And there is our linkage, as I was talking about, complete with our, the, again, that old worn out sealing gasket. And you're going to put a new one on. I found one in the kit. This is. The O-rings on this, I was happy with everything, except I was not happy with any as far as matching up for that air hookup that we just installed, that plastic elbow. And that's why I just reused what was on them. I thought they looked all right. There, that slides in, and then you want to take this nylon washer goes on this, again, tab that's molded into the carburetor body. Then slide that down in again you have to let partially out before you can line it up and slide that other part of the linkage in and then we're going to take and put our throttle butterfly down in which the first one went in real easy this was giving me a hassle but again just sort of keep working it around the throttle until you find don't force anything once you do have a position well the throttle will go shut and then again once you get it at the right spot there we go now we can get the screws put in it and there's one in and then we're going to put the other screw in and that'll take care of that in a second oh do excuse the video it gets a little shaky at times because i have the tripod sitting on this card table for a nice high angle shot but the problem is I've shaked the table I also shake the camera that's one disadvantage of using a lighter duty table but it works and I'll tighten the other one up another bit which well, these are small screws but they're extremely fine thread it seems like you turn forever till they do turn in but eventually with patience they do tighten up in there and just make sure our throttles operating nothing's jammed up and it seems to be moving freely and now we're going to take and put the o-ring on the other side where the 
shaft comes out of the carburetor and the throttle linkage goes on and again probably have to do like before I'm gonna have to take here and use the screwdriver I was going to use that little hook but that is sort of sharp I could tear the o-ring and the fill of screwdriver is a dull way it's back down to using a screwdriver for everything but what it's necessarily made for however it looks like I can for whatever reason this o-ring's being contrary that's too fat. I'm going to not use the tip part of it there. I'm going to carefully just like use the edge and finish pushing this over and again with that little finer tool, the hook tool. And there I'm going to say that's in and now you take and this here like a metal washer which I reused goes on. It actually sort of like a snug fit into the carburetor body itself. And one of those did not that I had seen come with the kit, which that's sort of a little bit disappointing. And there that's back in. And now we're going to take and put our spring on for the throttle. This is similar to the throttle on the other one, the half the spring. You put it on, it hooks down under this tab that's again molded into the carburetor. I'm trying to show you what I'm talking about. And then you take and we're going to grab the, this is actually where the throttle cables hook on push it on the tab and then you're going to take before you slide it down on the shaft and like once you have it lined up here that is I'm going to take here and give it a turn that it will actually here, get it up to the camera here I can show you better and at that spot with some tension on the spring you just want to slide it down on the shaft and there just back on put a lock worse or a nut on and that concludes that and it's not going to fall off for anything now and to sound like a broken record here we get to take and tighten this up the 10 millimeter socket and there is the carburetor assembled and check our throttle linkage and you can see that that's sort of on that if you have it right it'll work nice and free and if you don't have it right well it's not going to work properly and now this is one of them we just nearly made to need to reinstall our throttle the auto adjustment the thumb screw and without a doubt after these carburetors are back on the bike I'm sure they're going to need synchronized and such but that again we'll worry about that step that'll be another video in the future and there here's a another ring for this vacuum T don't forget this vacuum T that sits in between these two carburetors and these actually, I did find suitable O-rings. I'm pleased with the size and the matchup on them. Okay, now we have those. And we're going to take and install the T. Oh, I really won't call it a T. It's sort of a funny shape. Take notice of the video how it's sort of hard to explain how it does go in. But that's the left carburetor I just slid it into. And then the other carburetor goes into the other side that has the o ring. And again, the one part of it, there's no place for an O-ring because that's just where the vacuum hooks on it from the motorcycle itself. And then you sort of give these, there's your linkage. You see how they slide back in, that spring in between. And once you have it pretty much all lined up, and there, get that, make sure that T's lining up at the whole thing when you go to push together. This is, again, sort of a little bit tricky to do. But it's a little bit of maneuvering, manipulation. And perhaps it'll go back in. Again, it's just not a necessarily one to try. And then I look here. Here, I, this screw should have been removed in reassembly, but I'm going to take and just pry it. it. It's like I say, we'll slide back in under spring. Again, of course, on that, maybe I didn't adjust the screw. Maybe back to the carburetor synchronization. Maybe it won't need it, although I still took out the thumb screw. But there, a little bit more here, I have to pry up on that spring. And finally, I do believe it's going, it's again fighting, but it's back together as one unit. Now the last step here is to just install the screw, these big long zinc coated screws that hold the two carburetors together. One comes in from the right carburetor to the left which is the one we're installing right now and you can see the pictures in the video the location of the screw it's sort of i know when i first took them apart it took a little bit to 
looking carefully to find it, but then it's not really that bad either. And then again, now we'll give the carburetor, we'll turn it around, and then we'll put the other one in. It goes from the left to the right carburetor, and there's the spot that holds that. Again, either it's the right spot or not, otherwise there's no extra holes or nothing. You're not going to mix it up, and that concludes that. Alrighty, I hope you found this information in this video helpful. Tried to include as much as I could. And again, there's our carburetors, and double check our linkage, and it's operating freely. Alrighty, thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing to the channel.